Um, so it's uh, quite a long story. It was a it got, I'm naturally, basically people think I'm Pete the Street because I paint on the street, which is true. But it goes back to originally when it happened was when I was selling my gear on the street in Bath. And Saturdays were always a big day for trying to earn a couple of quid. And um, I used to enter, and I still do, Bath Society of Artists, which happens in the Victoria Art Gallery every year in the summer. Wonderful open exhibition. And I wanted to put a couple of charcoal drawings in. And um, so I asked my mate Charlie if he'd do it because I was trying to earn a couple of quid on the day and he took them down here and then that night I met him in the pub and he said Pete I took them in and, and, the, and the person behind the desk said oh you must be Pete the street and it don't know where that person got it from and so he said she mistook him for me obviously and he said yeah I am and he said that's it Pete you're Pete the street so it's all comes from from that and I don't really know who it was really but someone at Bath Sight of Artists so yeah well, over the years, you've certainly been uh, a, a, a well-spotted person around the streets of this city. What is it about painting plain air, though? Because there must be days when it's the last thing you want to do. Um, it's like anything. To a certain extent, you, there is an element of whatever you do, you've got to kind of get up and get out. And that's, but that's kind of... But the thing is, once you're out, once you're there, it's, it's the most... Um, I, I always think it's kind of like mindfulness really well, I sound like a hippie but it's, it's really you really do involve yourself in in wherever you are in looking at your surroundings and analyzing it and and over a period of say a sitting would be about two or three hours if you get it done in that sitting may hooray but if, if you're coming back you're spending a lot of time in one place and you're watching all sorts of things you know, happen and, and temperature change and weather change and fans park in front of you and people talk to you. And f on the first note, it's a really lovely way of spending your life because you're in the public domain and it's very sociable and lovely. Um, but from the artistic point of view, it is, um, it is very intense and a, it's a really good way of, for me, it's anywhere I work really, it's a really good way of making me sort of see things and work out kind of what I'm going to do next and develop hopefully. And it's basically, I always see see and put as, as that thing that it influences you. You don't influence it, if you know what I mean. And so that's hopefully how my work develops. So yeah, it's kind of like... You, you said it's a very social thing to do, so you, you don't mind people coming up and saying, oh, hello, what are you doing? No, I don't. I mean, I, I always say I don't, um, and, and I don't on, on the whole. Um, but it, as I say, it's very, it's, it can be a very intense process. And I, I do think that, um, I mean, I wouldn't dare say this to my friends, but in an art environment we can say this because they just laugh at me. But I, I do feel that when you've had a really good session, um, you know, a, a three-hour session, it's like coming out of an exam if you've really, really looked. So there is that element where you want to really, really concentrate and you're in a zone. And, and so I can handle most noises sort of wash over me. Um, the, the only noise that still gets me is when a kid chucks a skateboard on the ground. I don't know what it is about that, to, to go skate in it. But, um, uh, but I do, you know, I do love, I do actually like it when people interrupt me. Sometimes I do and sometimes I don't, so you've got to, you know, but, and I do love, um, it's because it's, it's interesting and actually sometimes you you do need time out and need to sort of, sort of look away from the painting and chat but it's also lovely in in, in new places because um, because you're very unthreatening I think and because you're painting someone's backyard you're doing something which is almost a, a compliment to someone about where they live so I think I'm quite approachable on apart from I look like hell this is me looking really good but well, relatively but I look like hell apart from that I look quite scary and, and you know but I think I'm sort of quite approachable and I'm a sitting target so people do like to come up and talk to you and it's lovely because you very quickly become part of of an area if you like to a certain extent you know you sort of become a bit of that of, of that life in that street for that that moment you know the artist over there and I can't I really like that yeah I mean that's yeah the, the other thing about you um talking of interruptions there are natural ones like it starts raining heavily or, or it starts snowing you see that as a benefit don't you yeah I do I mean it, it's, that's kind of the essence of of, of painting really it's it, it, it's that 
you, you want to capture a moment in time to a certain extent um, and so the, the change with the, the, the transience of weather is, is, is perfect for it but the, also it makes you work so you have to work very quickly and it makes you work very quickly because it can change like that you know so so you, you, there's a brilliant it sort of helps you capture itself if you know what I mean you, you want to capture the transients and you have to work quickly because it's going to go and so it's it, it, it's it's, a, it's just kind of like a perfect conversation combination but also a nightmare combination because because it's infuriating you know you can you know you can suddenly you set up to do a, a beautiful sunny painting of, of a street and suddenly you know clouds roll over and, a, and the heavens open but you know and sometimes I abandon it and sometimes I go well stuff it let's go with it you know and, and change everything last minute sort of thing but it's 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 that tension which is kind of good and it kind of gives that I think gives the painting an extra um, sort of life and a sort of spark you know that you wouldn't kind of necessarily get if you were looking at a fixed thing you know in 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 very fixed conditions you know you've got to be a very fit man then I mean how how often do you go down with a cold no, it's, that's quite interesting, actually. I think, yeah, I mean, I talk to GP, and I'll explain it. But no, I'm outside all the time, and I, I rarely get out of cold. I, I usually get a cold at the end of our summer holiday, actually. Um, I, 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 every, it's really bizarre. If we manage to get to Spain or somewhere nice, you know, uh, or somewhere warm, it's at the end of that. And I think it's because I, I still do a little bit of painting on holiday, because otherwise I'll just blow up. But... Um, and I think it's just because I'm not taking, you're not getting the air, not getting the fresh air. I mean, it's just like your mother said, she's right, I think. I think it's huge, yeah, yeah. You have painted Bath pretty well from every angle, but I think I'm right in saying you're standing in front of one view of the city that you've, you've been reluctant to paint up to now. Why, why is that? Why not Pulteney Bridge and Weir? It's funny, isn't it? I always think it's quite an arrogant thing when people say, oh, I don't want to do the chocolate box view, you know, because actually the thing about the chocolate box view or whatever is the view, it's the view that everybody loves. And, you know, and, and it's a wonderful thing that, you know, sort of unites us all, if you like. We all love it. You know, it's like when you... We all, we'd all point the camera in the same place and end up with the same picture if you gave us a camera. Um, but I have ducked it, yeah. To, I have... Christ. They are setting up yes, here. Yes, there goes a picture. That I do... Um, yeah, so I have ducked it a bit because I thought, oh, you know, I, don't, you know, I want to look for some other interesting corners. But... But the bottom line is, uh, I always say that if it tickles you, you should paint it. You know, and that's, that's, my, that's my rule. Pontley Bridge was just beautiful, you know, this summer, you know, that the light in it was just incredible and I just, and, and it's seeing it afresh as well, not seeing, oh, I'm just walking past Pontley Bridge, but just seeing it from afresh and I think that's one of the things, you know, I've, I've painted Bath since 90, 26 years, 1993 off and on and, um, and, but you can have the same buildings in the same location and geography, but it's just seeing it afresh, you know, and I think that can happen all the time and hopefully as you develop you know you see things you go through different layers and you see things more intensely or whatever but you you see more stuff in it you know um something like i understand a uh, hundred paintings here mm. um, and of course one must make the point you're a full-time painter a full-time artist so um i suppose there's sort of this is like income here isn't it i don't know how many years you're reckoning this is going to keep you in your family but no. You don't restrict yourself to just painting one city, do you? You like travelling. Yeah, I do. I mean, I, I was. It took me a while to kind of actually get there, to get to kind of getting in a boat or getting on an aeroplane and going somewhere. But, but when I first got persuaded in 2012 by a friend, also the idea of painting with other artists, I thought was a bit kind of grim. Everyone sitting around stroking their beards and being artists, you know. Because um, I quite a bit of a sort of lone spirit, really. So. Um, but once, once I'd gone out there, the first trip was to Udaipur in India and in Rajasthan. It was just phenomenal. And it was like a recharge. It was incredible. And, and to go from you know, places like Bath and a lot of London, and to, from uh, Regency architecture, or architecture that's kind of you know, quite... You can, if you want to, you can apply the laws of single point perspective and work it all out. To go to a place like India where it's just chaos, you know, where buildings, you're painting a building's made up of a fertiliser bag and a bit of corrugated iron and, you know, a bucket, you know, it's kind of like, it's a completely different um, process altogether and you, you get away with nothing, you have to look, look, look. So the, the travelling is, um, yeah, really important. And also I want to just make sure that Bath definitely is the best place in the world, you know, so, and I have to, I have to go around the world checking it. So, um, where is left? Um, 
well, the world's massive, isn't it? I bumped into a friend the other day, well, a while ago, whose, whose daughter did some sport thing in Russia or something. And I said, there's some place in Russia, I don't know. I said, what's it like? He said, it's an absolute hellhole. And I thought, that's brilliant. That's one place I don't have to go because everybody says, you know, where you should paint, you know. And, and, and of course, there is loads of places. You know, next one, next one I'm doing is to Nepal, so I'm really looking forward to that. Um, um, but I want to go back to New York. You see, also you want to go back to places. So New York did a couple of trips there in 2017, and I really, really want to go back there because you know you find a place and you start, you scratch the surface, and then you think, yeah, I want to get, I want more of that. So you, you get hooked on places. I mean, New York's really got me. Paris is, I want to get back to, and so there's some places that really get you, you know. So. Uh, to me, um, you're ageless. You don't look any different now as you did years ago. But Please. there's there's a rumour going around you've started to paint indoors. I mean, is that age catching up with you? Yeah. Uh, you know, it's a bit warmer inside. We said that earlier, didn't you? You levelled this with me earlier. He said it's like Bob Dylan when he picks up electric guitar. I've become a traitor. I've, it's always kind of been there a bit. Um, I, I would always, I have always. Uh, a bit, uh, bit of contemplation perhaps, but painted the studio really. I always, it's got to be, you know, things that I'm seeing. And, and so I have done little studies of the mantelpiece in the studio, which gets full of clutter, which I really like. And, um, and so that has always been there in a little bit all, all the way through, but I always felt very guilty about doing it because I felt I have this sort of thing about feeling obliged to paint outdoors, you know. So, but now I'm more comfortable in my skin and I, I love painting interiors. Yeah, it's a... Uh, it's it's a um, it, what's interesting is that, that that for one the light can be quite consistent so you get a bit more control um, but also um, it's that contrast of light the indoor the outdoor and all that sort of thing I find fascinating in the space and also the domestic and the kind of and I can indulge myself and paint my own corny family home you know and I love doing that and that's you know that's a really nice thing I mean you know hopefully I'll get through this life and we, you know we'll, it will hit bank balance on zero and it'll all be fine you know I won't be too much in debt but um, but you know I know that you know when I can no longer paint, a paint pick up a paintbrush I'll be probably looking through sketchbooks at drawings of the kids when they were like five and sit, you know, like a sad old git, you know. But that's, you, I think that will become more important to me at the end, you know. So they are extremely, I mean, very nostalgic, very self-indulgent, but, you know, but it's still quite important to me, yeah. Very. I, I also said earlier that to me you're a very grounded man because we arranged this interview to give you time to go and collect the kids from school and you've got to be back here for a preview uh, tonight. You are selling your work here today. I mean, you've got to make a living, Pete. Hopefully, hopefully yeah. I mean, it's, it's always... It's a, it's a funny thing. These are quite sort of risky ventures, really, one-man shows. You do a huge amount of work and you just pray that someone gets a wallet out at the end of the day. But um, I've always been really lucky. Um, uh, you know, as you know, I used to sell them on the streets. And, and the great thing about doing that is you know that if you price anything low enough, someone's going to buy it, you know. So I think that uh, we, we're not going to have... I'm not saying we're going to have a, a flash sale at the end or a fire sale at the end. But, but, um, but yeah, I've been lucky. And actually, I, you just can't... You can worry about it, and you will worry about it. But that's what a pint of beer is for, really. There's nothing else you can do about it. You just sort of carry on doing it, actually. And if, if I sort of, if I paid any attention to it in my work particularly, you know, thinking about, you know, but will this sell? But, you know, then I'm just going to get in a bit of a, a loop, and it's not going to be healthy at all. So all I can do is just do what I happily, just do what I love doing most, and doing it as honestly as I can, as best I can, and just hope that someone else likes it. And that's all you can do.